Hi everyone and welcome to another Grace Unlimited Tuesday Devotional. I am Katrina Alexi Hundana, one of the volunteer workers at Grace Unlimited in Sharjah, UAE. Today we are going to talk about real forgiveness. But first, please join me in prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah Lord God. Uh, thank you for tonight, Lord, that uh, you gave us the opportunity to study your word again, Lord. Uh, thank you for giving us the time and uh, uh, the, the revelations, Lord God, that you are giving tonight. We glorify you, Lord God, and let, uh, let your word, Panginoon, manifest in our lives, Lord God. Let it be a light unto our paths, Lord God, and uh, you speak through me, Lord God. We thank you for tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I would like to uh, start with this question. How do you express your love and appreciation for a person? Please comment down your answers. Thank you. Each of us started our relationship with God through forgiveness. Colossians 2.13 says, When you were dead in your transgressions, He made you alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. Think about it. God made us alive together with Him by forgiving us. Forgiveness is God's recipe for fresh starts. After all, it's how He started you and me over again. He made us new in Christ, where all things passed away and all things became new. Sounds familiar, right? That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. He transformed us into brand new, born-again righteous beings by forgiving us. In fact, God's way of dealing with mankind is forgiveness. It's His go-to reaction with human beings and it is His very nature. In Isaiah 43 ver verse 25, He says, I, even I, am He who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. God never has unforgiveness in His relationship with you. Never. So we, as Christians, approach those who have sinned against us with the sentiment of grace deeply ingrained in our hearts. We forgive others because we ourselves have been forgiven. Amen? Forgiveness is the releasing of our wrath and condemnation in favor of these things. Forgiveness means praying for those who have evil intentions for you, Forgiveness means abounding in love that is only possible when you really are abiding in Christ. Forgiveness means never avenging yourself but leaving it to God's capable hand. Forgiveness means doing good to those who never do good to you. And forgiveness means watching your own life and ensuring you are not guilty of the sin that's been committed against you. And forgiveness does not mean feeling good about something bad that happened to you. Forgiveness does not mean letting someone out of the consequences of their wrong. And forgiveness does not mean never being disciplined by a loving father. While the scripture is full of stories, parables, and words about forgiveness, the heart of the matter is that it will not always be easy to forgive. Agree? People do horrible things to one another, and sometimes genuine forgiveness isn't going to bring about the restoration of a relationship. This is especially if the person is the wrong, in the wrong is unrepentant and unwilling to change. So while it may be difficult to immediately forgive, we need to spend time dwelling on the fact that no matter what has been committed against us, it has been committed against God a thousand times over. This is yet another reason why genuine biblical community is so crucial to living a Christ-centered life. Why so? Because we need help remembering who God is, and in turn, who that makes those of us who are His. But what really is real forgiveness? Let us read our main verse from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Amen. Thank you for that word, Lord. In the New Testament days, it was said to forgive an offender up to three times. A fourth offense was unforgivable. Peter thought he was being a spiritual giant by offering to forgive not only the fourth offense, but up to seven offenses. In this lesson, we will learn about sharing with others the real forgiveness we have experienced from God. Number one, real forgiveness must come from the heart. 
And it says in Matthew 18 verse 35, This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Do you remember the quote or saying, I can forgive but I cannot forget? Well, to be honest, I myself had this in me for over the years. But insincere forgiveness is not forgiveness at all. If we can't forget, there is a good chance we haven't really forgiven. If we continually bring it up, we have not forgiven it. The first reason why our forgiveness must come from the heart is that we are sinners who have been forgiven by God. Amen? Because God places no limits or conditions to His forgiveness. We have gratuitously received and still continue to receive today divine forgiveness of sins in our hearts. We forgive first out of gratitude to God for forgiving us so graciously. The second reason why we should make this decision to forgive from the heart is that we want to remain free and to grow in that freedom that we have received from God's forgiving love. When we are growing in that freedom that Christ has won, we can recognize and pursue the good freely and avoid all forms of evil in all situations. We'll slowly lose our freedom and become enslaved to many things and attitudes when we do not forget forgive sorry, others as we have been forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters, we must make a decision to forgive from the heart over and over again. No matter the magnitude or frequency of the offenses and regardless of the lack of remorse of the offending party. We must do so simply because we have been forgiven by God in Christ Jesus and because we want to keep growing in that freedom. In our Lord Jesus Christ, the divine choice to forgive us is made present to us and God will never go back on that decision. When we put conditions or limits on our forgiveness of others, we show ingratitude and we slowly lose our freedom and become slaves of what we should be masters. We become slaves of addictive behaviors. We cannot seem to get enough of material things, pleasures and possessions. We are slaves of human respect, praise, appreciation, affirmation, and more so. By our lack of forgiveness, it becomes difficult for us to choose virtues and we unknowingly and easily hand our hearts over to torturers. Again, our forgiveness must come from the heart. Our next point is real forgiveness precedes powerful faith-filled prayer. Mark 11, 24 to 25 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. In this passage, Christ is emphasizing the absolute necessity of manifesting, living, unwavering, and obedient, obedient faith in our lives. Without faith that God will do what we ask Him for, we cannot expect to receive anything from Him. But godly faith alone is not sufficient either. Necessary aspects of successful prayer include the need to ask, to ask in faith, to pray boldly, to keep God's commandments, to bear the right of kind, the, to bear the right kind of Christian fruit in our lives, to pray in Christ's name, and to pray always. The important point to observe here is that Jesus taught forgiveness as something connected to prayer, something that best happens in prayer. How often do we try to forgive someone in our own strength? We are not able to forgive without God's involvement any more than we can experience salvation without God's involvement. If we are having a hard time letting go of something, perhaps we should, all, we should ask ourselves, am I trying to do this on my own or am I praying to God about this matter? God won't ever make you forgive. It's your choice. The good news is that He's standing by, ready to help, he just wants you to want to forgive. When you ask for His help, He's right there to supernaturally put you over. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And for our last point, unforgiveness causes bitterness, and bitterness defiles relationships. Hebrews 12, 14-15 says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. 
See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitterness, bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. The opposite of living in peace is living in bitterness. Unforgiveness causes bitterness. Bitterness causes defilement. The only way to live in peace is to walk in forgiveness. When we're harboring unforgiveness, we are dealing with hurts in a fleshly way. Unfortunately, that's not the way to get healed. God wants to help you overcome the hurt, and that's done in the Spirit. Romans 8.13 says, If we live according to the flesh, we will die. But if we live by the Spirit, we put the deeds of the flesh to death, and we can live God's abundant life. That's a better way to live. When a person hurts you, don't wrestle with them. Recognize the source of strife, division, distraction, and offense. Take authority over the devil and prevent unforgiveness from clogging your blessing pipe. Also, remember that the devil is sneaky. He doesn't come marching up to you with a pitchfork. He uses people and situations to distract and torment you. Because we forgot this, we react in the flesh by wanting to retaliate or by attacking the person or by holding a grudge. Let's recognize when the devil is trying to undermine our faith. 2 Corinthians 2, 10-11 says, Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan may not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. We are not ignorant of his devices. Let's recognize when he's trying to dis distract us and undermine our faith through unforgiveness. We can turn the tables on him by forgiving. Amen. I've learned that forgiveness isn't about the other person. It's about me and my heart. When I can't let something go and forgive that offense, it eats, at who, it eats, it eats away at who I am. It twists me up with strong roots that eventually turn into bitterness. Unforgiveness keeps me from growing, learning, and living in the freedom of who God wants me to be. It's been said that having unforgiveness for another person is like drinking a poison and expecting that person to die. Unforgiveness actually kills us from the inside out. Our hearts are blackened with the sin of keeping score, of wanting vindication, of hoping that the other person can experience just a little of what we have felt. God knows the prison that unforgiveness will create in our hearts and minds. It's an unholy place we cannot and He cannot inhabit. He even says that if we can forgive others, He can forgive us. And that's a scary thought, right? Forgiveness is letting others off our hook. It's not an easy choice, but it is the act of releasing and allowing God to deal with them in His way, in His time. He promises and He will. We just need to trust Him. Jesus said that we should forgive others before we approach God with our prayers of faith. Unforgiveness is when we hold not anything against anyone. I will repeat that. Unforgiveness is when we hold anything against anyone. Forgiveness is when we let it go. So let us choose to forgive because we are forgiven. Amen? So that's it for our Tuesday devotional. To wrap it up, let's have a recap of what we have learned tonight. Real for number one, real forgiveness must come from the heart. Number two, real forgiveness precedes powerful, faith-filled prayer. And number three, unforgiveness causes bitterness and bitterness defiles relationships. So uh, allow me to close this in prayer. Um, thank you, Father God, for the words that we have received tonight, Lord. Thank you that uh, you allow us to understand what uh, forgiveness means, Lord God, and uh, may you, Lord, uh, heal our hearts for whoever, uh, Lord, uh, we have unforgiven uh, the person, Lord, that, that uh, have hurt us or we have hurt other person, Lord. Cleanse our heart, Lord, and may we live in forgiveness as you have forgiven us, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, and uh, may you continually bless each and everyone, Lord God, listening tonight, Lord. Thank you, Father God, and we bring back all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching and I hope that you are blessed with God's message for us tonight. Remember, there is no accident when you click this video. 
and I hope that you join us again next Tuesday. If this is your first time watching our devotional series, you can catch out other videos that tackles about the fruit of the Spirit and how to walk with God on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to bless others as well by sharing this video. Like and follow us here on Facebook at Grace Unlimited so that you may be refreshed with God's word and promises to you. And be part of our growing online community. Now, let us be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, as says in Matthew 5.48, and work towards offering forgiveness more freely. Stay safe, stay blessed. Shalom!